Welcome back. You're still watching Daybreak. And just before we dive into our conversation this morning, I want to bring you a story that you will need to consider because it forms the basis of our conversation. <clears throat> and it is about the County Assembly's Forum has submitted a bill proposing to pay retiring county governors, their deputies, speakers, and the MCAs have to pay out and provide for parks to maintain the lives of retired officials. The Forum wants County Assemblies to approve the bill and finance pensions for the officials from the county coffers. The Salaries and Remuneration Commission, however, says such a bill may face headwinds as it's not within allowed end-of-term packages for such officials. The County Assemblies Forum brings together speakers of all the 47 county assemblies. They have now proposed a bill to allocate retiring governors a lump sum payout of one year salary which with the current rates of 924,000 shillings per month comes to 11.1 .1 million shillings per governor. On top of that, it is proposed that retired governors receive a monthly pay equivalent to 80% of basic pay, translating to 739,000 shillings every month for the rest of their lives. Should they die while on pension, their spouses will be entitled to 50% of the amount for life. For retiring deputy governors, the bill proposes they receive one-time lump sum payment of 7.45 million shillings, that they be entitled to 372,000 shillings every month of their life, being 60% of their current pay. Senior opinion, say hi. Hi. Speakers of county assemblies are proposed to receive a lump sum pay of 3.1 million shillings, and on top of that, they receive 60% of their monthly pay for the rest of their lives, equivalent to 155,000 shillings. For the ward representatives, it is proposed that alongside a contributory pension program, that they receive a lump sum pay of 1.7 million shillings, being one-year basic pay. Once retired, the bill proposes that governors, deputy governors and retired speakers each get a driver, a 3,000cc vehicle, a personal assistant or secretary. Retired governors are proposed to be paid a fuel allowance of 10% of the governor's salary, being 92,400 shillings. On top of that, governors are proposed to be assigned a housekeeper for the rest of their lives. But should they be appointed or elected to another office, the beneficiaries would have their monthly pensions reduced by the amount of their current pay. But according to the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, the county state officers are entitled to a gratuity at expiry of their term. As per SRC regulations, where a county has a contributory pension scheme, the employee has a choice between the pension or the gratuity, but not both. As per current guidelines, the county state officers would be entitled to a gratuity calculated as 31% of 60% of their annual benefits for the number of years served. Based on that, a governor would take home 10.3 million shillings, 6.9 million shillings for a full-term deputy governor and 2.9 million shillings for a county speaker, an MCA would take home 1.6 million shillings. All these figures are before tax. Comparatively, therefore, the proposed bill would occasion a higher cost for the taxpayer. Gratuity for the 47 governors, 47 deputies, 47 speakers and 2,222 MCAs would amount to 4.5 billion shillings assuming they all served a full term of five years. This is par SROC rates. The proposed bill would raise the lump sum payout to 4.8 billion shillings. On top of that, the retired governors, deputy governors and speakers would cost the taxpayer 715 million shillings every year for the rest of their lives. The County Assemblies Forum has instructed the assemblies to consider the bill for passage without amending any clause. The cost is to be financed through county funds, but can they? Such expenditure may require to be cleared by Parliament, and being a bill that would occasion the expenditure of money may require that the National Assembly too gives clearance. All right, and, and that's a summary of uh, what uh, that bill proposes. And we have in studio Honorable Mawaka Maure, who is the Member of Parliament for Igembe North, but also the Deputy Majority Whip at the National Assembly. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you. And we have uh, Juan Degua Home, who is the Speaker of the Nyandaro County Assembly, but also the Chairperson of the County Assemblies Forum. Welcome you, to the sir. studio. 
and also we'll be joined shortly by Governor Wangamati, Weekly Wangamati, the Governor of Bungoma. And uh, joining us shortly will also be Senator Ledamo Lekina from Narok. Uh, they'll be joining the conversation. But let's begin, let me just begin by asking you a personal question. Because the last we had was some process that was going on in your county to the tune of removing you as speaker. How far is that? It's a very sad uh, thing, Sam. And sometimes I wonder whether Nyandarwa is an IRAD. Because uh, in Yandarwa there is constitutionalism, constitutional order, and the rule of law. Uh, we only read them about them through the newspapers. As we sit here, despite they are not uh, being in numbers to remove me from office, the office of the Assembly of Nyandarwa is barricaded by police. Since April, there has never been a, a legitimate sitting of the County Assembly of Nyandarwa. And uh, there has been uh, issued orders up to the tune of 10, which cannot be obeyed because the governor of Nyandarwa has categorically stated that court orders are mere pieces of paper. And it has come to that uh, even after the County Commissioner of Nyandarwa was convicted of contempt, the police commander for Nyandarwa was convicted of contempt of court orders and the AP commander was convicted of contempt. There, nothing happens. And uh, the governor even uh, uh, some three days ago went to a radio station, a TV station, and said that uh, I would not be going back to that assembly. And maybe Maoka Maore is a reader of Jubilee because the governor always says that it is the president who does not want me to go to the assembly. It, we know Kimemia is a deceitful character. But uh, speaking that way publicly, that it is a president who does not want me in the assembly, and killing devolution in Nyandarwa is a very sad affair. Uh, Speaker Wahome, I would um, ask that you desist from, uh, uh, I mean, speak against a, a person who is not, not in studio to defend themselves because I don't know whether what you're saying is true. But now that the assembly has not had a sitting since April 2021, so now, who is the speaker of Nyandaro County? I am the speaker of Nyandaro Assembly. But you're it, not able to exercise I am not able to exercise my duties. Uh, some even now, like my official vehicle, is driven by the deputy speaker, provided security. Has, the he, has he been able to preside the affairs of the Assembly? No, he will come there for a few minutes, three minutes and adjourn, when they know that uh, I am supposed to go to that Assembly. The deputy speaker, like now, they sat uh, in, on the uh, 4th of uh, August, I joined it to 24th of August, I joined it to 14th of September, and then I joined after sitting for about five minutes. Actually, even the budget for Nyandarwa, we have challenged its implementation because the assembly, the way it was confined, to approve that budget was not properly confined. I never signed the forum. The clerk never signed the forum. And uh, though you are saying that I don't mention the governor, but these are issues that have been decided by the court that the crack who is sitting in that assembly is not the crack of the assembly. And the court has pronounced itself on who is the crack of the assembly. But that is not the crack signing the uh, forum. It is the crack who has been uh, imposed on the assembly by governor who does the governor's binding. But, but, but Speaker, I think it is, this has happened at least two times. Um, three times. Uh, well, three times. Why, would you, why wouldn't you just leave? Why should I leave? You appear unwanted. I cannot leave uh, the people of Nyandara to thugs. Some getuko, what we are talking about is um, massive misappropriation of resources in Nyandarwa. Mm -hmm. And I give facts and figures. We have about uh, 10 cases under active investigation by the ACC. And the people of Nyandarwa know exactly what I'm doing. And the why I have uh, the strength to continue fighting is that the people of Nyandarwa are behind me in this fight against corruption and misappropriation of public funds in Nyandarwa County. I'm just wondering because the last vote, was it in May, appears yes. to have uh, had that one voting against you out of 38. Why do you still doubt that? That is uh, just a criminal pronouncement. And I call them criminal pronouncements. And they are very annoying, uh, some. When clearly the deputy speaker pronounces there are 24 uh, uh, MCs in the house and 10 online, there are MCs who cannot be allowed into that assembly anyway. Since February, there are MCs who cannot go into that assembly. They are blocked by the police, who those who support me. So when the deputy speaker then pronounces that 38 have voted, 
And uh, when he is pronouncing that, I'm seated at the same place because I cannot be allowed to the assembly. These 11 MCs cannot be allowed into the assembly. We are seated in a hotel in Orkarao on a screen and they fought no and then they go to court and swear affidavits. We never voted for the removal of the government. But the deputy speaker is uh, instructed by the governor to pronounce that one foot because that is the threshold that is required. It is a pharacy. What is happening... The governor in is that powerful to influence affairs of the assembly? I thought they were within your... Oh, yeah. uh, no, what, what is happening in Nyandra, I'm telling you, it is the police who is, are barricading me from getting there. I cannot confront with the police. And uh, therefore, the governor is using police under the pretense that these are instructions that are coming from elsewhere and that the governor is only implementing. I'm okay. telling you, Sam, that even the county commissioner, even after being convicted of contempt of court, he still cannot obey court orders because he is getting... Uh, different uh, instructions from Kememia. Wow. The same case with the county commissioner, the same case with the AP commander. Uh, 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 speaker, I don't know the facts of what you're saying. so I'll I think you will be able to call some Kememia I, I, here. I'll, I'll just say that those the first you. time, Sam, maybe to finish on that one, uh -huh. is that under the supervision of the county commissioner, the assembly was broken down. All the doors were broken down. Some few MCAs, about 10 of them, entered into the assembly and they came out and they said they have removed me with, the ten f with the 30 votes. Okay. So this is kind of pharacy that is in Nyandaro. All right. Honorable Maori, as you watch this, of course, um, Nyandaro is not your county, you're not a senator, uh, but you're a member of parliament. And as you listen to this, I mean, it's how many years? Since 2013 until now, it's about eight years uh, going to the ninth of implementation of devolution. We're still facing such kind of challenges. Of course, the law provides that a speaker or any official can actually be removed or recalled in the case of member of parliament yes. but when you listen to this what does it tell you about the workings especially between an assembly and the executive that you need to sort of have a conversation and fix moving forward i think w what i know myself about the arms of any government whether devolved unit or the national government the governor's office is the executive mm -hmm. The county assembly is supposed to be the legislature. And even though they are supposed to work together for the welfare of the county and the revenue or the resources that go there, I don't believe that the county assembly should work at the whims of the governor or the whims or the, or the governor also should work at, at the siege of the county assembly. Mm -hmm. So. As you have rightly said, I do not have the actual intrigues of what goes on there, but I believe also the, the party, it needs to rein in on what is happening in Yandarua. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have an assembly that doesn't work. You come and adjourn and I don't know how they even get paid their allowances. Because many of the, whether MPs or, or MCs, you mostly live on allowances, not on the salary. Mm -hmm. So if you don't work, Mm -hmm. How do you get paid? So uh, there are so many dynamics, and I wouldn't really want to get involved in it. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right, and, and of course now the main topic here that we want to focus on is the bill that you're proposing. I'm just wondering if uh, the assembly that is supposed to be speaker of does not recognize your leadership, how then do you continue being chair of the county assemblies forum? Uh, the issue is that uh, I am the speaker for Nyandara County Assembly. That is the primary requirement for me to be the chairman of the county assemblies forum and therefore i am properly the chairman of the county assemblies forum having remained as the speaker for the county uh, assembly of nyandaro and sam getuko if there is no interference uh, by the governor and the police with the work of the county assembly i i would have no problem i would get into that assembly and conduct the business but now when you are confronted by police with guns and buttons and tear gas when i'm going to my place of work then it becomes a problem. So I am not a speaker. Has, has this become an issue at the Assemblies Forum? People saying that you've been impeached twice, there's a standoff between yourself and your MCAs or the executive as you claim. Has it become an issue in your continued tenure as CAF? It has never been an issue because the members of the counties in this country, they appreciate that I have never been removed that uh, for as the chairman, as the speaker of Onyandaro. Mm -hmm. the, my removal is only in the imagination of the governor. It has never been a reality to anybody else, but the governor imagines mm -hmm. that uh, I have been removed as the speaker. And the main problem, Sam, uh, for the governor is that 
I am his uh, main opponent in next year's elections, and he would try to use any, anything you're within his disposal you're to contain me. I'm running for governor. And that is the problem with Kememi. He is running away from his shadows, but uh, he cannot run. How far can he run? We have only 324 you know. days to go. Anyway, let's leave that conversation and focus on uh, what the bill that you're proposing that talks about that once the current state officials in the counties retire, whether it's at the next, next election or in future, they'll be entitled to some perks, including uh, one year's pay. But also on top of that, uh, for instance, the governors would receive 80% of their monthly pay for the rest of their lives. What's the justification uh, for this at a time that you know the elaborate law currently providing for such kind of um, retirement benefit is for the presidency why this and why now actually some is that uh, the, we should be congratulated for this this is wrong overdue the laws that have been passed by our parliament both the national assembly and the senate they expect us to develop pension schemes for uh, the state officers in the counties and uh, actually that is the county government act uh, section 132 if you look at it if you go to the county assembly service act section 12 section 26 and section 45 mm -hmm. they require us to develop pension schemes for our members or join existing uh, pension schemes and that is all that we are implementing now and uh, I, I, uh, there was an uproar across the country by the citizenry because of this law. But I would say that uh, this is a saving to the taxpayer in this country. The, the kind of programs we are uh, putting in place is only for social protection for county state officers. Just in the same way that it is happening for the state officers at the national level. We are not reinventing the wheel. Okay. We are just doing what we are supposed to do according to the law that has been I'll provided. I'll get back to parliament. the specifics first. And yeah. uh, but Honorable Maori, as you reflect on this proposed bill, what comes to mind at a time that it would obviously occasion some expenditure? Do you agree with the drafting, but also the process of enacting it? Well, I think when we do go to the history of the devolved units and the issue that uh, was in the minds of Kenyans, I remember the debates and the deliberations at the Bombers mm -hmm. when there was one renowned uh, devolution advocate, Muta Hangu. He, we, we had this mentality that uh, when we do the devolution, mm -hmm. we have something at the national level, mm -hmm. and it, it's a kind of a bottomless kick, or mm -hmm. just a huge kick, mm -hmm. where we need to send people from every unit to go and cut their piece and uh, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I remember there are some regions without going into reference to any, where they feel that they are poor because they have not been, learn, been allowed to go and pick their share at the national kick. Right. Now, there hasn't been any attempt of any kind for anybody to think about making the kick. Now, when we had the first devolution in the 60s, they, they went under because they were not sustainable. I think such legislation being pushed, if you allow it today, in a very short period in the near future, this will be the start of why devolution should be killed, or so we will be killed. Because the resources going there are not going to be sustainable. The national treasury, the, if they don't release the, the usual county um, allocations, mm -hmm. Everything comes to a standstill. But the, the essence of a devolution was that those counties would go and collect their own revenue. And it was most of that revenue would be as big as a percentage, which should be enough to sustain them. Okay. Now, they just wake up one morning, they come up with this uh, idea of the also pension, but they don't want to s specifically state where the, because a county should be able to pay for this, not the t national treasury.
Mm -hmm. And Senator Ledamolikina, welcome to the studio. And before I raise the question with you, uh, speak of home educators here, because it is okay. I've seen the proposal to have um, a, pen a contributory pe pension scheme at every county, but when you suggest that um, governance should be paid a lump sum pay of uh, one year, once they finish, their, they retire from their term, but also receive 80% of their pension for the rest of their lives, where is this money to come from? Now, already that this money is there. Where? The, the money is provided. Uh, we get uh, that 1% of the gross. That is the gross. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the gratuity. You cannot get both the pension and the gratuity. Mm -hmm. And what we have been fighting for for the last years, uh, two years with the SRC, is to allow us to convert this gratuity into pension. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what we are doing. And uh, if for the governors, uh, the amount ram sum they are getting, if uh, the graduate is higher, then they will get the d only the difference. If the graduate is lower than the pension ram sum that we are talking about, then they will get the difference. But actually, most of these monies are already available in the scheme that is already existing. And uh, actually, for the MCAs, because we are uh, putting them in the same line, because I've said we are not uh, inventing the wheel. The same way MPs do, the MPs have a contributory scheme. As of now, the MCAs get that 1%. It has a lot of taxation regime on it. And uh, therefore, pension is better because uh, uh, the structure of taxation is very, very uh, agreeable and very satisfactory. Uh, uh, speaker, from our calculation, yes. we, based on the SRC guidelines, gratuity for a governor after serving one term would be 10.3% million shillings but calculating based on your proposal that they receive a, a year's pay at the end of uh, the term then it comes to 11.1 .1 million shillings so how much would they receive if it's one million it? it's only the difference what do you mean 10.3 versus 11.1 .1 million yes uh, they what, what will they get they will get the 11 not the 10 the 11 so they get only one pay out you cannot get double payment and it is a uh, clearly and uh, unequivocally barred by so the law. Uh, and so that will be financed by the gratuity, you say? Yes, gratuity, because already the gratuity is provided. How we don't need to go back to parliament. How about the monthly pension, 80% of their final pay? The monthly pension now, that one will come from the counties. Is it contributory? Or it's, uh, no, the, for the, just like in the presidential and the deputy presidential pension scheme, uh -huh. that one is a defined uh, benefit scheme. Okay. Which is not contributing. Hold on to that thought so that you tell me um, the prudence of that expenditure. Uh, Senator, just hold on. We, get, we hear from Governor Weekly from Gamati from Bungoma. Good morning, Governor. And we are talking about this proposed law from the County Assemblies Forum saying that um, once yourself and your colleagues retire, you would be entitled to receiving a, at least 11.1 .1 million shillings uh, being one year's pay um, after your end of term but also a monthly pay of 80% of your final monthly uh, salary. How do you settle with this? I mean, is it something that you've advocated for as a governor or as council of governors? And uh, what are your thoughts about the financing? Because speaker here says the monthly pension would come from the counties. Uh, th th thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, I want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to be on this show this morning. Uh, Sam, I just wanted to make it very clear from the outset that um, the discussion about retirement benefit schemes for state officers in counties is a discussion that has been on since 2013. Uh -huh. It's a discussion that has been on since the, uh, the introduction of county governments. Uh, as governors and as council of governors, we have had this discussion uh, in our summit meetings with the president and we have discussed it. Once we had that discussion, we agreed in principle that we need to come up with a bill that addresses the issue of retirement benefit schemes for state officers. That is basically the governors, deputy governors, speakers, and MCS. Uh -huh. Now, what we have at the moment, uh, what the SRC are talking about, is basically a benefit, a graduate scheme. A graduate scheme is not a proper retirement benefit scheme. Uh -huh. um, and, and, and this... Uh, Sam, I speak as an actuary. I don't speak as just a governor of Bungoma County. I speak as an actuary, mm -hmm. a fellow of the Institute of Actuaries. So what we have, the graduate scheme that we have, is not a proper retirement benefit scheme for state officers. So what this bill is trying to do is to address the problem 
that we need to have a proper retirement benefit scheme for governors, deputy governors, uh, speakers, and even the MCS. Now, what we did, uh, Sam, uh, and I must say this uh, uh, so that it's very clear to every single person listening to me, right. is that they mirrored what is happening at a national level and that uh, what is happening at a national, the presidency, and also at the National Assembly. And also looked at the other jurisdictions, what is happening in Nigeria where uh, we have proper uh, devolution systems working, what is happening in South Africa, and other countries, that's what happened. That's where we came up with that bill. And that bill, what it says is this, that benefits for the, for the governor, deputy governor, and speaker, that is undefined, the same way it is for the president and deputy president and the speaker of the National Assembly. Uh -huh. For MCS, that scheme is contributory. The MCS will contribute and the employers will contribute on their behalf. So bail up contributions of retirement, then get a benefit out of that. Now, mm -hmm. the issue of the graduate was there, but that is not the way you actually provide retirement benefit scheme for uh, people. That is just a graduate scheme. It's not, it's not a proper retirement benefit scheme. So this, this bill is okay. trying to address the problem of retirement benefit scheme for state offices. Okay, all, all right. And S S Senator, now that you're here, uh, look, the, I'm making a case for this proposed law to sort of uh, provide for that uh, clear retirement benefit uh, program. What are your initial thoughts? And is this something that the country can afford, knowing that we have 47 counties? Can each and every county manage to finance uh, this? Um, Sam, thank you very much for having me this morning. Um, let me begin by saying that the proposed uh, bill by the Speaker's Forum or the County Assembly's Forum is actually ill-advised. It is, it is not supposed, the, the Constitution is quite clear that a county government can only uh, come up with a legislation when it is a unique situation that does not apply to any other county. If you read Article 191.2, of the Constitution of Kenya. It talks about <coughs> conflicts in legislation and where it says that national legislation prevails over county legislation. So I don't know who advises these mm -hmm. county governments because the only person or the only body which can be able to advise them in terms of the retirement benefits is the SRC which is mandated. If the governors the deputy governors, the speakers, and the members of the county assembly wanted to be able to discuss anything to do with their retirement benefit, the first place they should have gone to is SRC. The second place they should have gone to is the national parliament because it is parliament that, can be, that is mandated by the constitution, Article 191, to develop legislation which is uniform across all 47 counties. Mm -hmm. You know, when I heard about that proposal, I laughed. I said, you know, sometimes we have mediocre lawyers and we have real lawyers who follow the Constitution. It is something which will not be able to survive in this country because if allowed to do that, no, no, number one, it will not only be a burden to the taxpayers who are already bleeding, and you know one thing is that this country has been taxing its population. And you cannot tax a population for posterity. You only tax it to destroy it. So number two, it is only the national parliament that can be able to develop that kind of legislation. Mm -hmm. So my advice to these governors, to their deputies, to the speakers, is that if you want anything, please go to the national parliament. You cannot, you have no authority, you know. National legislation prevails over county legislation. Mm -hmm. That is my first approach on that. Mm -hmm. and, and Speaker, because in your forwarding letter to the county assemblies, you're saying that um, they need to enact it as is without any changes because it's a model legislation. How exactly do you plan to entrench it into law if it's to be enacted by the county assemblies and become effective nationally? Don't you need to seek consensus from Parliament? Uh, actually, we don't. Uh, Parliament has already done its part. I'm surprised uh, with my friend here that uh, we needed to get the consent of Parliament to be able to do this role. I'm a lawyer of 25 years studying, and uh, we know that uh, uh, this uh, role 
has uh, observed all the parameters that are required for a legitimate uh, uh, piece of registration. And uh, why we have asked the assemblies to pass it the way it is? Because it ha it ha there have been very serious consultations, mm -hmm. all the way as the governor said from the first term of 2013, because I was also the speaker for Nyandaro. And uh, we have consulted our constituency, which, uh, which are, uh, is the MPs, MCs. We have consulted uh, all the speakers, the deputy speakers, uh, the deputy governors, and the governors. <coughs> and we have agreed this is the way to go forward. As I had said, the County Government Act, which was enacted by both the Senate and the National Assembly, and the County Assembly Service Act, they allow us to come up with a pension scheme or subscribe how to an about, existing how about, pension scheme. How about you legislating to have retiring governors, speakers, and deputy governors benefit from the public coffers for the rest of their lives? Does, does it, is, doesn't that require a consensus from parliament? C can I just, uh, even before, let me yeah. just rebut on what he said, because it really shocks me, you know? Because it does not matter which legislation is in place the constitution prevails over any legislation. And I've just given him a clause in the constitution, Article 191.2, and I'll actually read it for you. It talks about national legislation prevails over county legislation. So it shocks me when a lawyer of 25 years goes out and purport that county government can be able to go out there and draft legislation which will become applicable uniformly across the country when they do not have that mandate. SRC mm -hmm. has a sole mandate. Let me give you a, a very good example. When the um, MCAs were seeking the car grant, the only body that granted them, albeit in very ulterior motives, maybe my friend Mooke can be able to tell me because we are, we are fighting for the BBI, it was only SRC that actually gave them the mandate, not the county assemblies. Now, you tell me, we divide revenue, the, the Senate divide revenue for all the 47 counties. The only way, and if you go to the PFM Act, section 109, it talks about all the revenue raised by the county government must be swept to the county revenue account, apart for, except money which is set aside by, through a fund. You tell me, how, who is going to pay for this money? Where is this money going to come from? Mm -hmm. My advice to them is this. You can take all the time you want, you control your county assemblies, but no one is going to fund it. It is like we in the Senate now trying to propose a money bill. If you look at Article 110 of the Constitution, it clearly defines on what a money bill is. Okay. The Senate cannot define a money bill. Let me right. finalize no. this point. Mm -hmm. On issue of taxation, it is a National Assembly that drafts the finance bill. The, the Senate doesn't have a role to play with it. So here, if this was unique to one particular county, then I would say it is something very interesting that they would be allowed by the Constitution. But this is something which is uh, supposed to go to cut across the 47 counties. All right. So this can't happen. Or, 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 maybe no, I, 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 just hold on. No, no, we need to me, circulate the conversation. I, um, actually, what happened is that uh, when the bill was being drafted or negotiated, I think there was over excitement. And in the process, there is a, what you call overkill. Yes. Overkill in the sense when you say you give somebody 80% of his uh, basic pay, then what's the purpose of being called retired? Second, if you are getting a car and a driver, the first question is to go to where and to do what? <laughs> because, you know, the, you, you are talking about the president, just a very unique office. Mm -hmm. It's one person in the country. You cannot have a problem or burden of uh, financing. But if you just have uh, 47 officers, there are deputies, then there are other officers, if you want a contributory kind of pension scheme, there are so many agencies in town who actually go marketing their products. Exactly. And the, the pension funds. They just walk to you and you contribute. That one, nobody should bother with it. But if you want the taxpayers to pay and you really don't want any limits, like I remember what we have in Parliament, there is a two-term limit. Mm -hmm. And I know there has been a lot of fight from the 8th Parliament, 9th Parliament, 10th Parliament, mm -hmm. 11th, and even the current uh, parliament, right. where people are fighting to have a one term and pension. <coughs> but the actuary, and I'm glad the governor said he's an actuary, 
you cannot compute <laughs> somebody who has worked for 60 months. It is not possible. You, whatever arithmetic you use, unless you come with a rungu and they say, I'm giving you money, but without based on, on any law mm -hmm. or, or any, uh, any, any reason. So I think what has happened in the county, this pension bill, is a bit unfortunate. Okay. And as he has had, if it will not go through the Senate, who are supposed to be their great partners, I don't know how it will go to the National Assembly. And, and Governor, <laughs> as you listen to this, of course, there's <coughs> that question that is still unanswered how i mean the reasoning may be right based on uh, the aspirations of the council of governors and other um, officials but how do you intend to make sure that happens to pay retired governors for the rest of their lives without a consensus from parliament um let me let me first uh, say this um, um I've, I've listened to uh, my friend uh, Olekina, the senator, I've listened to Maore, the member of parliament. And I think first and foremost, uh, the two issues that I've, I've, I've had, one is the legality of the bail, then two is uh, the benefits of the bail. I think, I think Olekina is, is, is saying something that, and I think the speaker has tried to answer him, um, we have consulted widely on this issue. We have had discussions uh, widely with a number of lawyers and um, we did just work up, and we are not man-made, just work up <coughs> and uh, uh, have this uh, bill uh, before the county assemblies forum. Um, so we have consulted widely uh, with a number of lawyers, uh -huh. and uh, we believe that the process we have started is a legal process. And I think if somebody somewhere has an issue, then of course uh, we, we, are, we, we, we are ready to have that discussion about it. Secondly, I think the issue of the benefit structure and the way Maura is saying that, how, why do you pay 80%? Uh, I, think, I think it is important you understand the purpose of a retirement benefit scheme. The yeah, purpose of a retirement benefit scheme, and I think it is important as a country we have this discussion about it, because we, we are trying to address the issue of corruption in this country. We are trying to say we need state officers who actually continue working for these counties, for this country, so that they don't think about corruption going forward. At the same time, we are seeing when a guy leaves the office, you don't want to worry about what he's paid. Or what he how, how he sustains himself what we are trying to do in this bill is that we are trying to afford a governor a deputy governor and a speaker a decent uh, standard of living which is about 80 percent if you take 80 percent of his salary that will allow him to sustain his, his his quality of life that will allow him to focus on his work and this bill that we are talking about uh sam uh -huh. we have looked at a number of case studies across the uh, across the world it's not just about kenya we have looked at south africa we have looked at uh, nigeria we have looked at europe what happens involved units so it is it is it is something that uh, you know is it's not something that we just come up so the issue of 80 percent we have picked it from the presidency we have picked it from the national speakers we have picked it from, even the judges themselves the judges in this country also receive 80%. It's not just the presidents alone. So what we are saying is this, that look at the responsibility of a governor. Look at the responsibility of a deputy governor. When they leave office, for them to have a quality life after leaving office, then you know you need to provide for them retirement benefit scheme. And also, it is also important that we also start addressing that some of these issues because at the end of the day, if we don't provide for this, uh, you don't want a governor leave office uh you know uh, found uh, you know moving around and you know being unable to meet some of the basic needs G so governor, is... Go governor allow me to cut you short there because you still haven't answered my question because i'm asking how do you expect to make this happen without consulting parliament or without parliament enacting such a law and number two as you make a case for governors being given retired governors being given 80 percent of their pay why them? I mean, shouldn't they just be like the rest of citizens to look for something else to do and how to earn a livelihood? I think, I think, I think, Sam, what I'm trying to say is this. Uh, one is that uh, uh, look at the responsibility of our governor, because it is very important just to focus on the retirement benefit schemes of uh, what we have proposed in that bill for governor and deputy governor. What happens in this country when you have a retired judge? It is the same scheme. It's the same. Why? Why would you want to have a retirement scheme for judges 
and they do not have a retirement scheme for governors and deputy governors. The responsibility is probably the same. So I think, I think, I think it is important that we appreciate it from that point of view. The issue of how we can operationalize this, of course, we have had discussions with a number of lawyers. We have um, uh, pushed this um, to the counter assemblies forum. We're going to have it uh, passed through the uh, assemblies. And this uh, funding is going to come out of the uh, from, from from the county uh, source, resources, so we expect. I mean, if if SRC are having an issue, we're going to organize a discussion with SRC and, and help them to understand what we are proposing, and then probably move forward from that point of view. Okay. All right. So I, I, let, me, let me just uh, uh, to the governor quickly because they need to take because a I think uh, we, Kenyans are clever enough to be taken for a ride. And let me give you a practical example. I personally, Ledamo Lekina proposed a bill to amend the deputy president and other state designated state officers mm -hmm. uh, retirement benefits when i did that i sent it it was sent to the national assembly and what did they say it's a money bill you know the senate you cannot you know come up with that legislation mm -hmm. and that bill just died you can go back and check the records number two SRC has a sole mandate to set allowances and benefit for state officers. Is Governor Wangamati and my good friend here telling me that speakers, governors are not state officers? You know, let me tell you, there is this of uh, zealous or, you know, this pretentious nature that when you have a body like the Council of Governors, now they have a mandate to be able to dictate what happens. You know, the Constitution does not recognize what the Council of Governors is. It doesn't recognize this, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the, you know, the county government forum, the county assemblies forum. In fact, it comes under the intergovernmental mm -hmm. you know, body. So really, these are fights that we have with governors. In fact, even in the Public Accounts and Investment Committee, when they spend money that is meant to be able to develop the counties by sending money to the Council of Governors. They shouldn't be getting money from the county to pay for the County of Governors when they are paying for their offices in the, in the Delta, uh, Delta House. They should go to the intergovernmental body, mm -hmm. get their money from there, and pay. So if my good friend Wangamati and my good friend here, who is a 25-year lawyer, want to get anywhere with this, what they need to do is to backtrack and, number one, Go and sit down with SRC and say, SRC, since you have the sole mandate, what can you be able to do here? Can you help us? Number two, they need to begin by either going to the National Assembly or coming to the Senate. And uh, in fact, the National Assembly, because it's a money bill. Mm -hmm. Once it has been originated from the National Assembly, it will come to the Senate. The law is very clear. Currently, we have so many legislation that the National Assembly ignored the Senate. What happened? They have been suspended, including the amendment to the Health Act, you know? And currently, when you, when you go around and you look at even the Poisons Board, they are applying provisions of the Health Act, which had already been suspended by the High Court. Mm -hmm. So instead of us dilly-dallying, and instead of us pretending that we have the power, we go back to the basic, look at who has got the mandate. First, SRC. Number two, the National Parliament has got the sole mandate to develop legislation which is applied uniformly across the entire 47 counties. All, all right, and I need us to take a short break on that note. When we come back, we'll be diving into more details about this proposal, but also reflecting on what the law provides for a retired president, a retired deputy president, and even the judges, but also what would happen uh, now that um, that matter has been sent to the county assembly. Stay tuned.